Hello and welcome. Have I got an interview for you today? I've got Melissa Eddy on the line and she's going to tell us about her Mars One candidacy. She is already famous for various reasons outside of Mars One and she's going to tell us about those in the interview later. Welcome Melissa and shall we start off with you telling us why you wanted to be a Mars One candidate? When I first applied, I wasn't quite sure because whether it was just for, you know, scientific people and no, to be honest with you, at first I thought, no, but we'll apply for it and see how it goes. The more and more I actually looked into it and got involved with it and the rest of it, I started to look at things differently and thinking, wait, hang on here a minute. These people are after character. They are after a person's personality. So I thought, I've got as good a chance as anybody else. And yeah, I believe then, at that point, to, to, I, I can make it all the way. Melissa, you sound very confident, but you've been for a lot in your life. Um, what role do you think adversity has played in your successful application so far? Firstly, obviously, like you said, I have gone through quite a lot in my life. I don't really dwell on it, but I, it has happened and I can't change it. Some of the things I've stumbled across, some of the hurdles, most people would have thought, no, this is too hard to get through. I've carried on, I've fought and I've fought. I mean, it's only 20 years ago, I was actually diagnosed as transgender, but after all the counselling, they, they basically told me to go away and live my life the best that I could as a man because I'd never, ever be successful as a woman. And again, most people hearing that would have thought, no, I'm giving up with this. I, I'm not going ahead. The professionals have told me, give up on that dream. But no, I'm male and there was no way I was going to give up. And I thought and I thought and I thought. Well, Mars One does say they want psychologically tough candidates. And it's like anything else. I will not give up. I will never, ever give up on anything. And I think that Mars One may have seen my strong personality, my strong determination, and that is what is going to help us in Mars One, that not giving up. I, I will find an answer to a problem. If we've got a problem, I will find the answer. So, Melissa, what skills from everyday life are going to be useful to you on Mars? The things I think is going to help me, most people would say, oh, it's because I've trained as an astronaut or I've trained in physics or space science or whatever. Yeah, I'm a taxi driver. And you're probably going to think, what has this got to do with being an astronaut? But when you actually sit down and think about it, for 14 hours a day and night, I'm in my car, secluded area, with four people, another four people in that car driving about. I've got to get on with these people, regardless of what they're like, what their personalities are like, how awful they are to me, how nice they are to me. While they're in my car, I've got to get on and on with them. So I have, I have now got that ability to be in a confined space with people and Get, up, get on with it, regardless of whatever's happening at the time. And I think that will help, because we're, we're going to be in a confined space together. So I've already dealt with them things, and I'm able to do it now quite easily. It's just part and parcel of my everyday life. Talking of people's reactions, how have you found people, um, the Mars One community in general, how have you found they have responded to the thought of a transgender person on Mars? I've had mixed reactions. Most people are supportive, but when I first got through to the second round, there was none of it in the first round, but when I got through to the second round, I had a few people um, email me, Facebook message me, private message me, saying who I am, etc. is wrong. It's against their religion and what have you, and a couple of them have been the other applicants as well. Obviously, I'm not going to name them because I'm sure Mars One will see through these people anyway and they won't move on to the third stage, but because with so much sort of prejudice, it's going to come to light, so I'll let them 
uh, show the true colours. Well, it's good that you seem to be handling it really well and that you're just content to give them enough rope to hang themselves. I'm open about I'm open about my uh, transgender state and everything else, and it doesn't matter what people say to me. I've got big enough shoulders now to take it, and that's probably one of the reasons I do stand up and shout, hey, I'm transgender, say what you want, but I am going to get it out there. Diversity is beautiful, and let's share it to the world in hope that it supports other people. I'm hoping that my presence just may help them sort of stand up to it, if you can understand what I mean by that. Well, a Martian colony doesn't seem like a great place to hold intolerant viewpoints. So do you think that some people might need to uh, perhaps become a bit more tolerant and a bit more loving towards other people? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's, it's going to be a case of total acceptance to move on. There's, there's going to have to be nothing stands in the way for a person. They've got to put everything behind them if they do want to move on be it religion or, you know, the, the, the person's thoughts, they have got to accept everybody, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that they, they have to support it, but they have to accept it. There is a difference. Well, on that positive note, Melissa, I'd like to thank you for doing this interview with me here today. And I'll probably see you up in London when Mars One does its next uh, set of interviews. I'm sure you will, Ben, yeah. <laughs>